everybody. I hope you're doing well. It is three weeks, uh, just over three weeks until I get to hit the trail full time. So I'm very excited. And as I promised, I wanted to do my Q&A today. Uh, there are some great questions that have come in through the channel and also have come through my other social media sites. So I wanted to share the answers to those with you. And um, so here it goes. We'll just start at the top. Uh, first up, uh, Steffi's trail mix. Steffi uh, asked what is in my personal toiletry bag and um, really nothing terribly unusual. Um, I, you know, I have my toothbrush and my toothpaste, a small little comb, uh, some Dr. Bronner soap uh, that does multiple duties. Heard it works as toothpaste but I hope I won't have to use it for that. Uh, so those are the main things. I do have some dried wipes that I'll use uh, until they're gone. And um, then I just have some uh, more first aid kind of items. So uh, some Body Glide. Um, actually, there's a, a different brand. Uh, Vagisil makes a uh, anti-chafe that works really well. So I have both of those. I can. Use. And then I've also got some um, uh, poison ivy treatments. So I've got IVX, uh, which, and I might get them mixed up, but IVX and IV Rest, which treat poison ivies and also help prevent poison ivy. Uh, I'm very, very allergic, and that's something that could take me off the trail if I'm not careful, so I have those in my kit. Uh, but, uh, next one, Ashley Cobb and several other people asked about the headphone and the mic combo, and I'm not actually using it today, but it did work great on the beach. Thank you all for giving me feedback on that. And it is just a set of um, Bluetooth headphones from Anchor. Uh, they've got a little clip so you don't lose them. The sound control and the mic is all in one unit and then they have little magnets so that if you're wearing them just around your neck that you won't lose them so they work great they're the anchor sound bud surge and this is actually the same company that made my backup charger which is a 10,000 hour milliamp power um, charger that i could get several um, recharges from so i'm real happy with the quality i think i paid about 18 dollars on amazon i looked the other day and they were 23 so prices change but uh, you might get a bargain uh, when you go to look for them if, if you'd like and i will put a link uh, down in the um, in the description for you so Next question comes from, I believe it's Charletta, which I think is a cool name. We actually have some Arletta's in my family. So Charletta, if I'm pronouncing that right, love the name. And she wanted to know what would be my biggest potential downfall and what would be my biggest strength during the journey. And I think those are great questions. Um, it's interesting because unfortunately, you know, watching other YouTubers and, and although I'm a little down, I haven't gotten out there yet and I still have to wait. Um, it's kind of a bummer to see some people that you thought would do really well have to come off the trail for injuries and other reasons. And I know that the same thing could happen to me. My biggest downfall, um, I think could be loneliness and missing my family. Um, it could also just be letting my mindset get the best of me and getting too discouraged if I'm having too many tough days in a row. Uh, but I really do think that even though I don't have the super athletic body, you know, I'm reasonably fit, but I wouldn't call myself an athlete. Um, I don't think it's gonna be as much the physical game as the mental game to keep me going. And the flip side of that in terms of my biggest asset is that I can be pretty darn determined when I try. Um, if there's something I set my mind to and I really want to do it, I don't give up. Uh, I'm a little bit different. Sometimes I might start out to do something and then either find myself bored or find myself just um, disillusioned a little bit. And so sometimes those things are things where I make that kind of strategic decision to quit. I don't think the trail is going to be that way. This is something that I really want to do. It's kind of a once in a lifetime chance for me to get out there. So I don't think um, that that disillusionment is going to set me back. But I do think the determination will get me through uh, when I am having those rough days. And I think particularly if I'm having a bad day and I can just sometimes take a day off and really rethink it and just remind myself of why this is important to me, I think that determination is going to see me through. And uh, it will be interesting to see as you guys watch how that holds up. And maybe, who knows, there might be some other strengths that come out that are a real asset. There may be other things that uh, trip me up. We'll see. So stay tuned. <laughs> Next, um, got a question from Midlife Adventures. And they've asked about my Nemo Hornet tent and if I've had it out in the rain. And I have. I got rained on uh, terrible thunderstorms for several hours uh, when I was hiking the Pine Mountain Trail with my sister. 
and the tent held up really really well it did uh, some of you notice there's an at the end of the tent there is uh, the rain fly doesn't come all the way down and I did get a little bit of moisture blowing in there it wasn't terrible I, I could certainly live with it uh, but actually one of my viewers suggested making something to go over that part of the tent and I do have some extra polycryo and I can uh, make that with that and um, I'm gonna give it a try anyway and see that might help if there's just a really wicked windy thunderstorm that I have to contend with um, so other than that I didn't have problems now there was an issue that night with my site selection I was camping on an established tent site and the ground was very very hard packed and it was also one side of it was elevated with a little retaining wall rock retaining wall that around went around so there was the tent site and the wall on kind of like two-thirds and it didn't occur to me that as the rain came in that that could turn into kind of a puddle or a swimming pool and uh, so I did sort of have to bail out the inside of the tent uh, in the middle of the night I had some water kind of seeping up uh, because I was really literally um, had the tent in a puddle after a couple of hours of rain so that was kind of a lesson learned to think about drainage on my sites as well as being level and looking up above and that sort of thing so thankfully I'd say the tent held up pretty well overall um, and actually wasn't bailing out inside the tent I was bailing out around the tent I reached out to the vestibule when the rain let up a little bit and tried to get some of that puddle away but by morning it had kind of soaked through the bottom of the tent but I, I wasn't wet at all and uh, it worked out okay so I'm pretty confident that the tent's gonna do well on the trail and I'm actually looking forward to getting out there and spending some time in my new little green home um, old ladies hiking north hey I think you guys are on the trail now I hope so I hope you're doing really well uh, they asked about my pack and what it weighs I have the granite gear crown 60 it's a granite gear VC crown 60 I think that's a lot of words um, it's the women's version and um, with the brain on it weighs I think 2.1 pounds and um, fully loaded with all my gear. I'm with food and everything, probably about 26, 27 pounds. I'm still working on that a little bit and I'll do a final gear video um, either next week or the week before, right before I get ready to go and show you everything that I've actually has made the final cut to get into that pack. But I really love the pack. I had an Osprey beforehand and it, number one, didn't really fit me quite right. And it had so many pockets that I was constantly losing any things. And one of the things I love about the granite gear is just the simplicity of it. And um, some people like to have lots of pockets. And I just found that, you know, especially when I would get hiker brain on the trail after getting real tired, that I just couldn't find things or I'd spend lots of time looking for things. So I love the simplicity. It's helping me be very organized and um, really, really happy with the granite gear. Um, and also just a, a shout out for them because I did break one of the little pull tabs on um, the zipper to the brain one day when I was uh, packing up to leave camp and I just pulled a little bit too hard I guess and it, and it broke and I reached out to them to get a replacement and they actually sent me just five of them no charge so that if any other ones break uh, over the course of my hike I'll have them so thank you Granite Gear for doing that love 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 that kind of support um, let's see what else do we have Abby and several others asked about the little bottles that I use uh, for my toiletries my um, my soap my sunscreen my bug spray all that kind of stuff those are craft bottles so you can get them at places like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joanne uh, you can also get them on Amazon they usually come in a pack of four or five little bottles anywhere from you know half ounce to two ounces depending on how much you want to carry uh, the ones that I use uh, for the soap have a little squirt top they're actually made for fabric paints and a little a little pointy top so you can kind of score them real well if you need to get some soap or some water out of there and um, then a little cap that goes on top so those are pretty handy and they're only you know two three four dollars a pack so I felt like that was a small price to pay to be able to kind of downsize my toiletries and um, other uh, other items that I needed to carry along uh, the last question I had is from geckos trails and this is a two-part question uh, he's asked if I'm going he she I'm sorry I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Either way, Gecko's Trails, thank you for the question. Uh, the question is, are you going to monetize your YouTube channel and then also if I'm going to use funds to fund my hike or if I'm going to donate to charity and if so, what charity would it be? And I thought that was a really interesting question because actually when I started thinking really seriously about through hiking late last spring, um, I was just getting ready for my mission trip to Honduras, which I've done with my daughter uh, for years. and. Um, uh, last year, the past couple of years, she hasn't been able to go because she's in grad school now. But um, 
it's been really a meaningful organization for us working with the Lamb Institute in Honduras. They're actually based in South Carolina, but they um, work in Honduras uh, with women and, and children um, and young adults uh, that are at risk. They have a children's home for 60-some um, children, 65, I think, that whose parents can't care for them. Some of them are orphans, but the majority of them are just kids that parents can't care for them. Uh, they have a wonderful school, wonderful um, uh, inspirational faith training for them and uh, just a really really great organization I was going to do my hike for them but as I did more reading and more researching I really took to heart some of the comments I saw that if you do a hike for charity that sometimes you can lose your own goals and you can also just perhaps end up going on too long for the wrong reasons uh, because you feel the obligation to the charity and I started thinking about that I thought you know what I am going to support them no matter what um, and so maybe not do my hike for them specifically but keep them in my heart and I do have one of my mission team crosses that I've actually attached to my backpack so that's going to be going with me and uh, that's the charity that I would have chosen if I did but um, I made that very kind of difficult but carefully considered choice to not hike for charity uh, now I do have a request into YouTube to monetize my channel. It's been in pending since December and I don't know why they haven't approved it yet. I know they've had a lot of changes. Um, I meet all the requirements thankfully, but um, haven't got the okay yet. So when I do get that monetized, um, some of those funds might help with the hike. I feel like I'm financially in a pretty good position right now, thankfully. Very happy that um, business has been good. I've had some great clients these past few months, and uh, so that's been great to get some money in the bank to cover the cost of the hike. But uh, my preference would be actually to use that money for charity. So uh, some of it would go to LAM, and some of it would probably go to other organizations here in the States that I am uh, either involved in or supportive of. So. Um, that's kind of where my heart is. I like to like to spread things around a little bit. Um, certainly would love to be able to give money back to the trail through trail organizations. I'm a member of the Georgia Appalachian Trail Club. I'd like to be able to do things to support them. Uh, and as I hike the trail, I'm sure I will probably come across some other organizations or the trail clubs, you know, the ATC, the Long Distance Hiking Association, all those kind of things probably need some financial support too. So some of the funds that I get, if I ever get approved for monetization, uh, will probably go to some of those causes as well. So anyway, thank you all so much for the questions and thank you all for staying with me through this journey. Um, it's interesting thinking about the ups and downs I've been through already and how much um, those challenges are going to change in just a few short weeks when I get on the trail full time. But honestly, I just can't wait and I'm so excited to take you with me. So thanks again and uh, hope to see you next time. Take care.